Uh, the timer's already going, so I better get moving. Uh, the, uh, let me just say a couple things. First, the, the problem of street crime, as I say here, is a, a youth problem. It's important to understand and recognize that a good deal of police activity is spent interacting with young people, young adults, teenagers, because the problems of society on the streets are loud music and people hanging out and people fighting and uh, drug deals and you name it. So it's important that they handle those relationships well. A number of criminological studies directed a lot by David Weisberg and others have shown pretty definitively that sending police to hotspots of activity is effective in preventing crime. So let's begin with that premise. One of the questions we're beginning to ask more is what officers do when they go to these hotspots, and not just the hotspots, but when they deal with youth in general. And unfortunately, there's a lot of activity around the widespread use of Terry Stops uh, stopping and interrogating young people. A lot of it doesn't always prove productive. It sends the message, though, to young people that uh, this territory is policed by us, but there's some consequences that we want to talk about today. The three core issues that I want to just quickly cover is critics argue that it's indiscriminate uh, interactions, that they're stopping everyone and everything that moves in the neighborhood in urban areas. Uh, others argue that it's discriminate, that it's focusing on minorities and exclusively profiling them. Uh, we're not going to debate that issue right now. There's a lot of talk going across the country about that. We can always come back to that. I want to focus on a couple other things. The potential criminogenic effects. Uh, Dr. Weisberg alluded to that earlier. Ar arresting adults is not a doesn't have that much effect on them, but arresting juveniles seems to. We have research suggesting that you know you're more likely to not to drop out of school. Dropping out of school leads lots of research to more likely to not be unemployed. Being unemployed is more likely to lead to crime. So it may be having the opposite effect in the long run. So we need to be careful about who and when we arrest people. Uh, mostly we want to focus on today the negative interactions between police and youth that may affect police legitimacy. Uh, through the National Police Research Platform, it's a program funded by the National Institute of Justice and run by about seven universities around the country, we, have, we are developing new indicators of police performance, both inside the organization and externally. Externally, we have the police community interaction surveys that measure the quality of police citizen encounters. And this is just in one city. We're going to roll this out in 100 cities uh, in 2013. Uh, but you can see here already on the right side that uh, the young people under 30 are much less satisfied with the encounters they have with the police. And the question becomes why. Uh, we break this down and we are able to dig much deeper through our research. And uh, uh, following the concepts of procedural justice, we now understand much better that uh, it has to do with the process of policing and not so much the outcome. Here you can see young people on the left uh, with the red uh, bars uh, are much, on a four-point scale, much more likely to say that the police officer did not listen to them and let them tell their side of the story, much more likely to say the officer was disrespectful to them and humiliated them and whatever else, uh, that they didn't treat them in an unbiased way. In other words, they judged them on the basis of their race, gender, sexual orientation, religious affiliation, et cetera and that the officers were not trustworthy in, in, in the sense of showing concern for them. Um, so we, we know that that's uh, important. The question is why do we care? It, these interactions, research has shown pretty definitively, undermine the legitimacy of the police. Here's Tom Tyler's definition of legitimacy, um, a psychological property of an authority institution or social arrangement that leads those connected to it to believe that it is appropriate, proper, and just. So legitimacy for policing requires that the public feels that they're treating them properly and fairly. It's something in the minds of the public. It's the consent of the public that's important for police. Um, the consequences of this uh, when there are injustices as perceived by the public and weak legitimacy, a large body of research suggesting that the public is then less willing to cooperate with the police, which can contribute to the no snitch culture that's growing in some of our urban areas. They're much less willing to comply with requests by the police to do certain things, and they're less willing to obey the law. That's really important when an orderly society that this kind of uh, legitimacy is affecting that. Uh, they're also, we believe, this is being documented, more likely to file complaints, lawsuits generate negative coverage of the police and the media, which all undermines uh, legitimacy. So 
uh, if uh, we're going to, in the long run, the argument here is the strategy may do more harm than good, the strategy being uh, these aggressive contacts on the street. In the, if it undermines, if it's leading to more disorder and, and less order in the long run. We, we haven't established that over time. That's something we're working on. In the short run, clearly, it makes the job of the police very difficult. And you have to understand that police officers, when someone doesn't see you as legitimate and challenges you, you have to use more force than you would have otherwise. And that leads to counterforce, which escalates the whole situation. And uh, you can see where that goes. Big problem, and uh, we need to address that. Um, solutions and policy implications. First of all, let me be clear that um, Terry stops are essential to police work. Eliminating them is not the answer. Uh, but we need to use these stops more surgically and less frequently. There's no excuse in a free society for stopping a majority of young people on the streets in a given neighborhood. It only creates resentment and uh, also undermines the legitimacy, as we've just argued, in the long run. So um, we need to move beyond that. And we need to, I'm arguing here, train police officers and supervisors in the methods of what I'm calling respectful, engaged policing. Interacting with young people in a respectful way, a fair way, engaging them in real conversations, not seeing every, not field interrogations that express authority and control, but uh, communicating with them, talking with them, uh, sharing experiences with them, learning about them. That's how you build trust and confidence. I want to put in a, a big plug here for foot patrol. It's time for police to get back out of their cars and meet the community. Uh, years of research show that it reduces fear of crime. Recent research uh, at Temple shows that, in fact, it can reduce violent crime. So we need to uh, promote that, uh, and, I, and I want to talk a little bit more about the benefits here for a minute. Police officers can learn the social landscape uh, of the neighborhood. Who are the good kids? Who are the kids that are at risk of delinquency? Who are the kids that are gang leaders, drug dealers, repeat offenders? By doing that, you can identify problems, solve the problems. Building rapport can also occur in reducing the no-stitch culture. By that uh, can happen when you get to know the community. There are no shortcuts, by the way, to, to doing this. Getting out, getting to know people, just it's a basic principle of human interaction that no one's gonna trust you. You're not gonna get any intelligence from anyone to solve problems if you don't build a relationship with them. This also allows you to identify the high-risk youth and repeat offenders. They should be stopped and frisked every time. Uh, and it, in the end, this will build police legitimacy and prevent crime. I just want to say that I feel there's a promising future. We have done randomized trials to show that young police recruits can be trained in these social skills. We need a lot more work there, but I have this envisionment that we can build a police force in the United States that uh, has the sk skills to interact with the public that can be the better person, be the uh, and, and not feel a need to respond in kind every time a young person challenges them. And so that will ultimately lead to public trust and confidence. Thank you very much.